Hello, welcome to our home. My name is Jim and I have Parkinson's disease. If that fact doesn't tell you anything about myself, Parkinson's disease has no say in defining me as a person. But I'm happy to talk about Parkinson's, especially if it's a topic that's positive and offers hope. So please come in and we'll talk a little bit about exercise and music and how they can help someone with Parkinson's disease. My objective in making this video is to provide another perspective on something that can alleviate some of the many symptoms of Parkinson's disease. You saw four words at the start of this video, exercise, Parkinson's, disease, and music. So if you'll stay with me until the end of my brief video, I will tell you about my encouraging results so far. I would like to first lay out a disclaimer, I'm certainly not a trained professional in any of the topics I'll be talking about, although I do have a high degree of interest and a personal stake in each of these topics. Let's talk about exercise for a bit. I've known since my diagnosis nine years ago that exercise is very beneficial for Parkinson's patients, but you know how hard it is. My wife and I used to exercise regularly, but since my diagnosis, we gradually reduced that to zero. I used the lame excuse of having too much to do and not wanting to spend my time that way. I wish I'd resumed my regular exercise program before now, because the earlier you start, the more benefit you'll receive. If you've been diagnosed recently, I urge you to get off your duff if you haven't already and get with the program. You'll be a lot happier down the road if you do. Now, here's my friend Paul. He's faithful to his exercise schedule, and he doesn't let anything keep him from finishing his exercise session. Just take a look, and you'll see what I mean. My recent motivation to light a fire under my exercise program came from my beautiful wife, Joy. I just couldn't resist when she said, come on, we both need to do it. I was also recalling the passing of my friend and godfather Tom McHugh in 2013. Tom suffered from Parkinson's disease. I decided this year that if there's anything I can do to delay or prevent the progression of this terrible disease in my brain, I will do so. There is a significant amount of scientific evidence on the benefits of exercise in reducing the effects of many symptoms of Parkinson's. These are some of the benefits that the experts have found. The methods used to gather this information and make these conclusions range from animal studies to human trials and also include modern brain imaging techniques applied both to animals and humans. You can see that the potential benefits of exercise range from improved gait and balance, sleep patterns, to improved thinking, and almost everything in between. The big question is, how can this happen? Scientists used to believe that once a person reached a certain point in their adolescent years, their brain no longer progressed or adapted for the rest of their life. This belief has gone the way of the flat earth. We now know that the human brain can miraculously change and adapt in response to environment, behavior, disease, and bodily injury, and perform functions in a different way to achieve the same results. We refer to those kind of changes in the brain as neuroplasticity. There is no scientific definition for this that I could find, so I kind of pieced this one together based on some things that I have read about it. Of course a person has to gear their type and level of exercise to their physical capability, and it's always best to consult with your doctor before beginning a new exercise program. Joy and I began power walking here in our neighborhood about four months ago. This was a good way to ease us back into a regular exercise program. 
We were walking four miles in just over an hour, which is a pretty good pace. When it got too hot here in the Houston area a month later, we renewed our membership to, in our community recreation center, which has a fitness room. It's not fancy, but it's more than adequate. We've been working out there four to five days a week for just over three months. There's a point I want to make here. You don't have to go to a gym to do what I'm talking about. A gym is nice, but a reasonable amount of good walking space or a path will allow you to apply these principles of exercise and music and achieve equivalent results. The machine that I spend the most time on and get real aerobic exercise on at the recreation center is the elliptical machine. As you can see from the picture, I'm pretty wet and sweaty and tired after that workout is over. This is me working out on the elliptical, and I think you would agree this can be very boring. But exercise doesn't have to be boring. And at this point, you may be thinking, whatever happened to music? What about music? Does music simply reduce the boredom that sometimes comes with exercise? Well, music can help with boredom, but there are other potential benefits that are far more important. And you might be asking, what kind of music are we talking about? Well, it can be any music that has a consistent rhythm and tempo and allows you to time your movements in sync with the music. In my case, I'm working on the exercise equipment at a pace that puts my steps or movements in sync with the rhythm of the music. The activity could also be walking, running, dancing, any of those kind of things. So, it doesn't matter what kind of music you use as long as it meets these criteria. I listen to pop, country, bluegrass, and my favorite for exercising is march music. With Parkinson's disease, the brain doesn't produce of the neurotransmitter dopamine, and the normal neural pathways for executing movement have been disrupted. What we're doing with music is providing some rhythmic stimulation which triggers the entrainment of the motor signals by the auditory signals. Put in very simple terms, we're training the brain to give us the desired result in a different way that compensates for the effects of the Parkinson's disease. We're getting closer to normal movement, but it's being controlled and directed in a different way, using auditory signals coming from the music and rhythm as our booster. There are two concepts that are important to bring in now, so let's move on to the next slide. These are definitions of two important technical terms, but it's not important that you remember them now. RAS refers to the cueing or stimulation coming from the rhythm of the music. I look at entrainment as kind of a locking on effect where the motor signals in the brain hitch a ride, so to speak, with the auditory signals in the brain originating from the music. This is a very simplified way that might help us visualize this. In the left hand drawing, the street rod is hitching a ride, so to speak, with the race car by means of drafting. In the drawing on the right, the space shuttle is being propelled into space by the giant booster rockets. In both of these examples, there's a locking on process that takes place. The street hot rod is connected to the race car by the drafts created at high speeds. The space shuttle is connected to the booster rockets by the hardware designed by the space engineers. And in both examples, there's a high degree of synchronization involved so that the results are achieved successfully and safely. Although these examples certainly don't accurately depict how music impacts the central nervous system, in the human body, I think they help us visualize what occurs when auditory signals provide an alternative to the normal means of transmitting motor signals in order to execute desired physical movement. How does this synchronization and locking on occur 
when we're using music and exercise to help with Parkinson's symptoms? Well, the principles are really simple and the same as in dancing or marching or in many activities. Let's look at this chart for a minute, which uses walking to music as an example. In the center, you can see something that looks like a ladder that represents 12 beats of a song. On the left hand side are footprints showing that we are walking or pedaling in a way that we match the beats of the song embedded in the rhythm, beat for beat. But that's not the only way to walk or take strides and be in sync with the rhythm and tempo of the music. On the right hand side, the person is taking fewer steps but longer strides to cover the same distance in the same amount of time as on the left. The walk on the right hand side is also in sync with the music because the right foot is still hitting the beats of the music four times in this little short segment of music. The following are some short clips of exercising with music and at a pace that's always in sync with the music, sometimes beat for beat, sometimes slower than the music tempo, sometimes faster, but always in sync with the music. She was standing at the front door And I came home last night Good book in her left hand A rolling pen in her right Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life Well, this is where we started and I promised that I would tell you about my results so far so Here's what I've seen. My natural arm swing has returned noticeably on my affected right side. It's not all the way back yet, but it's definitely improved. A music therapist told me that after the fact that this can be one of the first improvements she sees when a Parkinson's patient starts music therapy. My natural posture has also improved. It's much more erect. I still don't have a full arm swing on my right side, and my right shoulder tends to dip lower than the left. For the near term, my primary focus will continue to be on the exercise and music program. Making use of the principles of rhythmic auditory stimulation, or RAS, and entrainment. The music therapist also recommended that I try exercising with a metronome in addition to the music. This doesn't seem like as much fun as music, but the metronome does produce an accurate and consistent tempo and the beats are very distinct. This is an example of what a metronome sounds like. In summary, here are my plans for the next few months. I'll be adding some shoulder exercises to help my droopy right shoulder and working on upper body strength. Upper body strength is important for maintaining transfer capability around the house, the yard, or wherever you might go. So stay tuned, and I hope to come back and tell you about more improvements in the future. If you have Parkinson's disease, or have a friend or family member with the disease, I hope the information in this video may be helpful to you. Thank you for listening.